Uh, for today's video, I'll speak about the loophole op options that I'm seeing um, just in the preseason. So I think there's four options that I'll cover today, and I'll also explain the one that I'm going with. So there's Josh Tracy F8, uh, Fife or Saunders, so these are 102k mid and defensive rookies, uh, Charlie Combin at F8, and also no loophole. So the first option I'll cover is Josh Tracy. So would I pick this option? No, I think the problem with this pick is, well, Josh Tracy, he's suspended, I believe, for the first four weeks. But the thing with Tracy is he's not actually a loophole. He's He could be emergency, he could be the sub. We saw Oscar McDonald, a key position player, used as a, as a sub for Carlton. And the problem with that is, you know, if he's a late in or a sub, you can't use him as a loophole. It's not going to work. Um, yeah, it's you, you might get his score. So it's too risky in that regard. So essentially, he's a... a and also, he's not actually a very good rookie either, it seems. His scoring power seems pretty low. So what you're getting here is you're getting a loophole for the first four rounds, but then you're getting a maybe loophole for the rest of the season, or maybe he plays a few games here and there. It's just very... I feel very uncomfortable because you're leaving it to chance. Like, when is he going to get games? Is he always going to be emergency? I don't I don't want to deal with this. So um, for that reason, and he can't probably not going to score that much anyway, but he looks good for Fremantle. So for that reason, this is a no-go for me. The second option is, I'm probably seeing the most of, is either five or Saunders in defense or the midfield. With this option, I've seen it a lot, and as I said, yeah, I've seen it a lot, and I, I really hate it, to be honest. When I first saw it, I was like, nah, okay, maybe if we're gonna get a defense rookie, I don't know. But when you think about it, you have this you have this donut on the bench in the mids and or defense, and what's going to happen is you're eventually going to, when you need to cash in Flynn or Mikko or whoever your R3 is, you're probably going to trade him to a dead rookie anyway, because there might not be other options. Now you have two donuts for a majority of the season, and trading out a loop is not good. It's a waste of a trade. Um, so it, that's that's the first thing. And another thing is looping these guys, losing your loophole in mid and defense, especially with late team names, um, what can happen is if you get a late out, for example, um, while plays have played or your loophole is already on, it's it's very uncommon. It's unlikely to happen, but over 22 rounds, it can happen. Uh, then you're left with a donut because now you have yeah you can't get that player onto the field because you have your loophole on the bench. You have the loophole on the field that's played, so or something like that. But um, for the most part, it is it's just too risky for my liking. And yeah, the main point is eventually you're probably going to have two dead rookies on the bench. Horrific for the buys as well. Uh, at R3, it's not too bad because it's Gorn and Grundy there and you don't really need anyone else. But um, yeah, this doesn't make much sense to me and I highly recommend not doing this strategy. The third option is Charlie Combin. Now, the main issue with Combin, this is the one I probably like the most if I was going to run a loophole. But the problem with Charlie Combin is, uh, well, he's got a long-term injury. It doesn't seem like he'll play this year. Maybe he plays in the last few rounds, but I'm not sure. But long-term injury, so probably at least four or five months out. Um, he's a little bit more expensive, so that, that is a bit more annoying. But at least you know he has the ruck forward swing. So, you know, running Combinet in the forward line, you can just put him up to F8 um, for Flynn or, or Mikko, whoever you have. And then he's there as your loophole in the ruck line. And I always like I always prefer looping, uh, looping in the ruck lines because you're probably not going to have anyone cover in the ruck lines anyway in the buys. Um, and you don't risk laid out... Um, with other players on the bench and whatnot. So I, d I didn't mind this at first, but it leaves the forward bench a little bit exposed. And it could be, you know, we could be waiting six weeks for Flynn to make money. We could be waiting, we might be able to hold him for 10 weeks. We don't exactly know for sure. So it seems a little bit too long to leave him on the forward bench. It just leaves it exposed. Um, so for that reason, I don't love the common option, but if I was to run a loophole, it would be him. The final option is no loophole. So this makes the most sense because we have the, the rookies are there. Um, yeah, we obviously want to run a rookie at R3. So, and another thing is, like, the positives are, like, the neg or I should say, one of the main issues is we can't actually use a captain loophole early, possibly, unless a player gets dropped, which is likely to happen anyway. But, you know, we're kind of locked into, say, Gorn is our captain for the first few weeks, I guess. We can't lock in that vice captain score. So that means we might lose out some points there. But in the long run, um, we have a proper loophole. We don't have to mess around with it. Um, we're not going to have an extra donut on the bench. And yeah, eventually our loophole will be R3. So And also, we'll get more money in the long run. So for me, no loophole, while it's not the most bulletproof option, um, it makes the most sense out of these options. 
so yeah i'll be going with no loop hole this year um and yeah it should be good uh thanks for watching and uh last thing today you justin bieber album was out i don't really share much about that sort of my music taste or anything like that on youtube channel but really excited for that so if you've made it to the end of the video and you like the uh, you're a fan of his let me know but yeah big fan of him i think he's really good so thanks for watching and we'll see you soon